This is the second video on behaviours. Here the focus is on understanding the difference between systems and signals. Now we're going to assume that students are familiar with the definition of Laplace transforms for common signals. And we're also going to assume that students are familiar with the notation of left half plane and right half plane and implications of pole positions on behaviour. That was covered in the first video. The focus of this video is to consider confusion that may arise when talking about signals and systems and thus form a language where students understand what we're talking about in these videos. This is what we're talking about then. If you look at the block diagram we've got below, there are two signals in the block diagram. There's a signal U and this is signal Y. Now, when we're talking about signals, we use the terminology a Laplace transform because we can take the Laplace transform of a signal. However, in the example we've got here, you'll notice those two signals are related by the relationship we've put it here, Y equals G times U. And G represents a system. Okay? And we do is we use the notation transfer function for g of s where g of s expresses the relationship between the input to a system and the output from a system. Now um, what's the key observation that we want to look at here? y of s, okay I'll write it down, y of s is a product okay of g and u. And therefore y contains the properties of g and the properties of u. And we're going to use that in the next few slides. The output signal contains poles from the input signal u and poles from the system g. And therefore the dynamics of the output depend on the natural dynamics of the system that's what comes from G, and often this is called a free response. And also, any behavior that enters through the input U. So if U has got particular modes, like it could be sinusoidal or an exponential, then those modes will also appear in the output. And this is often denoted as the force response, because it's forced on the system by the dynamics of the input. Whereas the modes in G are natural. That's how the system wants to behave, and hence it's called a free response. Now here's the key question. When we talk about instability, are we talking about the signal Y, the signal G, or the signal U? Because you'll find there's quite a lot of sloppiness um, around, and that doesn't really matter, as will be clear from this video. What we usually mean when we talk about instability is that the signal Y of S includes right half plane poles, and therefore the signal Y of S is divergent and goes to infinity. So, instability. What we're saying is y of s has got right half plane poles. But if I just remind you that y equals g u, and let's look at um, what we can get from this. An open loop system may be unstable, or the corresponding output may be unstable, because either the input signal is divergent, that's u, or because the inherent system dynamics are unstable, that's g, or of course, possibly both. The consequence is the same, the output y would be divergent. However, if you're talking about an open loop system, why on earth would you choose a divergent input? That's something you're putting into the system. You'd be mad to make u divergent. And hence, if there's any instability, logically, it's got to come from g. Okay? Not from u. What about if this relationship represents a closed loop system? So the U now might be a target, a set point, something like that. Now, in this case, instability will typically arise because the closed loop transfer function has right half plane poles. And then you'll have signals within the loop that are divergent, even though the transfer functions in the loop may be stable. But the key thing I've put here is the closed loop transfer function, which is what we're using for G here, will have right half plane poles. Again, the most important observation is at the bottom. The loop input is always going to be assumed convergent because that's normally a target. And so therefore, the instability is going to originate from the G. So what we've got is that even though 
y is technically given by g times u, nearly always you're going to assume that the instability comes just from g. So in summary, instability refers to system behaviour, but in practice it's used interchangeably between system outputs and the system transfer function, even though these are not technically the same. So what we're saying is y okay, is not the same as g, clearly. But often when people talk about in instability, they sometimes mean y and sometimes they mean g. But our argument is, because y equals g u, as written here, represents the close, and that could be for a closed loop or an open loop, and we expect the input u to be chosen to be stable, then in practice the instability um, questions um, are the same. If g is unstable, y is unstable. If y is unstable, it's because g was unstable. Or rather, if I use more correct language, if y has right half-plane poles, it's because they originated from right half-plane poles in g. And therefore, the convergence of y can be assessed solely by analysis of g, which is what we're going to do hereafter.